What's up, everybody? I am Johnny Christ, and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I'm exceptionally excited today, but uh, before I get to my very special guest, I also want to thank my good friends over at Sweet Drop CBD Oil. They send me some stuff, and, I, and I'm not lying. These are my good friends. He sent me some stuff, and uh, you know, I just started trying it, and fuck, I feel a little bit better. So if you head over to sweetdrop.com, use uh, promo code Drinks with Johnny, Drinks with J O H W N Y. You're going to fucking get 20% off on it. And at SweetDrop.com, they'll tell you everything you need to know about cannabis or CBD oil. And uh, yeah, I'm not a scientist. I don't grow the shit myself. Again, my friends send it to me. I enjoy it. So I'm, I'm passing this information on to you guys. I'm going to start off with a little fruit blast this week. Right under the tongue. Let it settle. That's the whole thing. Someone told me I was doing it wrong before. I think I'm doing it right. Um, anyways... Uh, again, head over to SweetDrop.com. You guys know the spiel. You've been watching for a few weeks now. Um, again, a reminder, this YouTube channel that you're watching right now is actually a podcast as well. Guess what? It's a podcast. So head over anywhere you listen to podcasts. Throw on your headphones. You got something to do the rest of the day that will cry your eyes on something else. You can still listen to this content. Make sure you head over wherever you do that. Drinks with Johnny is super easy to find. Um, I'm going to shut the fuck up about all that and bring on my two guests. I got Adam and Neil today. Uh, Neil is from uh, A Day to Remember, and Adam is the photographer that follows him around as well as other people. We're going to get into everything. If you guys don't already know enough about them, you're about to find out a hell of a whole, uh, easy enough for me to say, a hell of a lot more. So uh, let's bring him on. How are you guys doing tonight? Hello. Hey, what up? How, everything good? You guys, uh, you guys healthy? You happy? What's, what's going on? Oh yeah, we're we're staying as healthy as possible. I mean, I'm out here in Florida, so it's a little bit wild, but uh Yeah, do you even go safe. outside in Florida? Like <laughs> Oh, everything is completely normal here. Like I, they well, said Well, I, I understand that everyone's acting relative. normal. <laughs> well, it's 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 normal for Florida. So there's zombies yeah, the and time. there's like all kinds of sick people running around and it's crazy, but yeah, it's like normal for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you, Adam? There. Where are you coming to us from? Uh, I'm in San Diego. I dodged uh Corona a little bit. Moved out of LA, took a little breather down here. Right you know, on, close to Mexico if I need to go. <laughs> and, uh, is it much? Be- it is it better there? Is it just more spread out? I don't. I don't really know. Just a little more room to breathe. Okay. I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not as not as clustered and not as high. It's fast paced, so it's just a little bit. You know, you can go for a run, not be close to other people. Yeah. Nobody's throwing stuff at you. It's good. <laughs> Why would they be throwing stuff at you? <laughs> I don't know. I, I lived in East Hollywood, so it was just like every street corner was a whole nother environment of something's going on. So it was just a little bit too much. And San Diego, sounds, it's like I got the zoo and a park. So I'm like, it sounds I'm like set. Florida over the there. The zoo in and the park, like settled, <laughs> settled. So let yeah. me ask you real quick, Adam. We just met actually for the first, well, maybe for the second time actually. But uh, more, more recently that I remember um, was in Costa Mesa Studios. You were. Uh, uh, photographing the guys in no effects uh oh yeah and they were you know we did the linoleum thing with them together so we were we were in the same place um that was cool that was really cool you you hung out the whole time you got to see like a little bit of the video shoot there too well before you did the you, what you guys were doing just so the fans at home know uh, uh adam was responsible for re re uh whatever you would say uh recreating white, recreating white trash to heaps in a bean cover for the anniversary that they've been doing and uh, they all took their shirts <laughs> off for it again. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was a remarkable man. Uh, we've become really good friends with the guys in Effects. That was that was really cool. It was They're cool like- to see because correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys kind of I mean you look up to them, and it was cool to see everybody interacting, just like different generations all together collaborating. It was cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've known them for a lot of years. We looked up to them um, absolutely, but we've done a lot of warp tours with them. We've been oh, friends yeah. in passing, and then like. I'd say in the last you know, two, three years, we've become a, a lot closer to them and everything, which is really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So let me let me ask you real quick before I go much further, and so I don't step on my my own toes later. Is it uh, El Macias? Is that how you pronounce your last name? You got it. I'll think that's like five for my whole lifetime. You could be <laughs> the fifth person to get it. Hey, hey, all right, all right. I gotta crack my beard of that one. Like. <laughs> okay, you got beer. All right, and we got we got Neil Cheers. Westfall. From yes, sir. a day to remember as well, and I, I'm pretty sure I got Westfall correct. I would imagine yep. that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fifth one. <laughs> what are you drinking tonight, man? I am having some Eagle Rare uh, Barrel Proof 
just with some ice in it. Nice. Yeah. Cracked so, it open just for the season. So before we, we talked, we were uh, emailing each other back and forth. That's a great beer. That's a great uh, title right there. Uh, we were emailing back and forth, and you guys let me know that you were going to be drinking Whiskey Neo, and Adam, you are going to be drinking beer. So I, I decided that I was going to do both and made sure that Whiskey I... Whiskey and I, beer. Yeah, I'm just going to... Very you know, nice. Uh, what I just, beer are you drinking? Right now, I've got a Stone IPA. Uh, it's Enjoy By. I don't know if you guys are familiar. You're in San Diego right now, where yeah. they're from, Adam. San Diego. That's where... I, it's from here, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the main... Dis, uh, uh, not distillery, brewery is down there. Actually, funny enough, our cameraman and, and uh, uh, cinematographer that follows us around got married at the at the uh, brewery down there. Stone probably, is yeah, so years ago. It's so. That's have sick. you been there, Neil? Have you been to the brewery? I've never. I've never been there, but I. Uh, I've always loved their beer. I've always loved their like whole aesthetic. Yeah. Like the uh, all of the like metal covers that they do all over their their labels on their beer. It's just. It's rad. Yeah. It's it's. And it's a beautiful place. If you ever go to the brewery, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. I mean, that's why they picked it. I think it had a lot to do with the beer as well, but I, I think it was also like a, like a pretty venue for them. So yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. So you guys are, are on the show. Our mutual friends in Sean and Marvin um, uh, hooked us up together. And Yeah, Marv. Yeah. We're, we're, I'm going to ask you guys some questions about those guys in a minute. But before we get to there, I want to I get to... Uh, no pressure. What you guys are on to right now. You got Don't Shit on the Bus podcast. Yes. This is a great title. Yeah. Um, being a touring musician myself, I know kind of where this is already going. But uh, <laughs> can you, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about this podcast, why you guys decided to do it and together and uh, you know, what we can expect. Uh, this launched and where we can find it, right? Is it launched already? Oh, yeah. We're on okay. episode three. We just did three today, actually. Nice. Neil, you can take it away if you want to. If you want to give them the lowdown. So essentially, it is a it's a podcast to kind of give information to people that want to get into the touring world uh, that can't find information anywhere else. So like you know, uh, it's something Adam and I were kind of talking about, and it's not really a subject that you can just like YouTube or kind of Google or find information on like what tour etiquette is or how to get on tour or what to expect when you're out on tour. Uh, some of the lingo that's used. Um, just basically once you get out there, it's kind of a walkthrough or a guide on it's like how not to get fired <laughs> basically, <laughs> or how not to be like an asshole on tour. And, uh, you know, just wanted to kind of create something just for people to, to have as a reference, you know? No, I love that. And and the title like absolutely fits because as most of us who have traveled in the bus before realize that that is the cardinal rule. Once you're on the the first time we started touring in a van, obviously there's no toilets mm-hmm. on the van. So, you know, figure that one out. And then uh, you, <laughs> you move on to a bus for the first time and, you know, you see a toilet, you get excited, man. I don't have to go to the fucking truck stops anymore. This is fantastic. I don't have to shit in a bag and throw it out the fucking window. <laughs> uh, no, never did that. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like the, but you, you've quickly learned the w- w- rule number one, do not shit in that toilet. It is yeah. not meant for that. <laughs> and if you do, everyone You're on fucked. the bus is very bummed. <laughs> yeah. You're going home or you're paying 400 bucks. a lot of money. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So, I mean, you're setting it up for, you know, etiquette for people to come out. I mean, uh, Data Member has been around since 2003. You guys formed, right? Um, Have you guys done Warp Tours? You did Warp Tours, I imagine, right? We have done uh, (laughs) three and a half Warp Tours. Three and a half? Yeah. What we, was we that? Was that? Wait, wait like, I gotta ask. Was that? Was the half for any other reason than just you were planning on doing half, or was there a story um, here? It was when we were first starting. Uh, we wanted to do the full thing, but Kevin's like, "All right, uh, we'll book you for half." You know, he, we were a new band, or we were new-ish. We were doing really well then, and um, we kind of had other stuff going. Like we were gonna go to Europe for like festivals and stuff for the other half. Mm-hmm. And then we did so well that he's like, are you sure that you guys like don't want to come back and like finish the rest of Warp Tour? And we were like, uh, we have to go do these other shows, but like we'll come back after that and keep doing it. And so <laughs> I think we ended up doing like the last week, like we did like the first month and then like the last week it was like, in, it was, it was 
rough. That was a rough year. Learning <laughs> learning experience. Well, you, I, I brought up Warp Tour um, to kind of bring in kinship to your guys' podcast. As you said, you're teaching, you're discussing etiquette. For me, I, I learned uh, tour etiquette through the Warp Tour. I was 19 years old when we did our first one. And wow. I consider that my that. college years. So it was yeah. like, you know, going through those and learning the camaraderie, the, as you said, the etiquette, everyone is on buses or vans. And at the end of the night, you're, you're hanging out with everybody. I mean, I owe so much of my career to those warp tours. And, uh, yeah, I just, I think what you guys are, what you guys are doing with this podcast is really interesting and really cool. Um, I got to ask though, are you getting into beyond the etiquette? Like some of the stories of like, this is some of the shit you might see. <laughs> and uh Absolutely. do not be surprised if it happens so what, what kind of stories are coming up yeah. so far we're i know you're only in uh third episode so far but uh what kind of stories are you guys covering well I, I think our whole theme is like we're trying to show people not just tell them so we try to build on our own stories or things that have happened and give them examples and for the first 15 episodes or so it's just going to be neil and i kind of giving people i don't know all the groundwork so that they know the terms to understand when we have actually crewing people on there what they're saying, what they're talking about when they say loadout or front of house or guitar world or, you know, advancing. And then when we get to bringing people on, I think we'll start telling more stories and doing it more, you know, going deep with a guitar tech or a tour manager or, you know, yeah, stuff we don't know about on our own. So that's great that you just brought up. You're bringing in uh, guitar techs and tour managers, no, the, the oh, unsung yeah, heroes, the unsung heroes of the world. Like that's absolutely. Yeah, that's that that th those stories. If you could get some of them on there, see, I I've, I've talked to some of our roadies about coming on my show just to like be like, hey, you got great stories. Like let let's hear some of them. Those they're unsung horries the, the are hermits, stuff. man. They don't want to be on a fucking camera. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're getting them on. Yeah, I yeah, like it's our, happening. <laughs> our our crew is like the the real rock stars of our camp. Like they they will legit drink to all hours of the morning, roll in at like seven a.m. at load in. Knock their teeth out. Like, yeah, no, have no problems at all. Like, they just show up. It's like, hey, what's up? Yeah, we're here to do the thing. And then, like, later on, they'll, like, drink you under the table, hang out later than everybody else. And be the uh, they, first ones up in the morning and, and exactly. loading in everything. It's a different yeah, they, breed. You have to come yeah. from a different uh, a different cut of the cloth. Crew people sure. are crazy. Yeah. They they're, are, yeah but I mean, they're awesome. I mean, like like I said, yes. I, we've, you know, we've gone through a lot of crew members over the years. I'm sure you guys have. And we have, a, you know, the last one that we had... <laughs> It's funny to say because it was two years ago now since we've been up. But like uh, that crew, like it's it, it's it's to a point where we're really excited about every individual on there, which is which is awesome. That's great. That's hard to accomplish. It is. How long have it takes, you? It takes a while. Yeah, it does. It does. And how long, Adam, have you been uh, toying with the guys in uh, a day to remember? Mm, I would say total about. 12 years almost like it's on and off like i'm not with them all the time mm -hmm. especially because my job is kind of like i'll oh, come on for just a few days sometime but tw yeah. i think we started in 2008 or 9 okay God, that's so crazy 12 years it's a long time <laughs> that's almost just as long as their way. does it feel like 12 years neil uh it <laughs> actually it doesn't feel like that long like i mean in my head thinking back to when he first came on tour with us it doesn't seem that long ago but then like we like the other day we were talking about stories of when we first met and he like talked to me about like some of those pictures that he shot. Uh, it was like the first, I think he was like shooting pictures for what ended up being like our first release on victory. Mm. Yeah. I was so, actually, I was actually the way I know about it. I remember is I was on the victory street team in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. And I handed out their EP at shows. And then when they played their first show there, I was like so excited. Cause you know, I was like in the pit and I knew the breakdowns and I was like, <laughs> I was a big fan, and then like a year later, I met up with them and started shooting. Rad. That's oh, I love those. So those those are the best kind of stories, honestly, that you hear uh, along the road is when when you run into people who who have found uh, f genuine friends and fans of what you're doing and brought them into the camp. You know, I think that's that's something that doesn't happen all the time, and when it does, I definitely I I, I recognize it and think that that's pretty fucking cool. It's like it creates this trust, like mm -hmm. this like underlying thing that like, hey, I can like be myself and doesn't fucking matter. It's like this dude likes what we're doing. He's here. He respects what we're doing. Uh, we obviously respect his work. He was like even at the time, like and he was like coming up or like you you just started doing this like like not that long ago. Like, are yeah. you serious? Like what? <laughs> it's like you're like the best. Like at the time, like I feel like 
when we were coming up, like the big thing for us was like, oh, we're going to be in like AP magazine or something like that. You know, like when we first met Adam and, Mm -hmm. and he was like shooting stuff that was in AP all the time. And we were like, we were, I think we were probably as excited to work with you as you were to work with us, which is kind of crazy. Tell all my friends. That's really cool. (laughs) (laughs) They said they're excited to work with me. (laughs) So do you, so, uh, are you following around with, uh, just photography? Are you doing uh, cinematography as well? Uh, I mostly just stick to photo. Like I'm okay. pretty, I pretty much have come to terms with the fact that I will get less work, but the stuff I'll get, I really enjoy. And then, you know, I do stuff. I have time to do stuff like the podcast and yeah, other kind of endeavors. So, yeah, they. That's why my my job has kind of changed a lot. There's a lot more demand for video. I mean, you yeah. guys know. You're totally. Not, yeah. Oh, but but uh, but speaking on that though, uh, you're a photographer. I know next to nothing about photography other than you know seeing a camera and standing in front of it and having our photographer tell us what to do. Um, I I don't know much about it. Did you go to a school for it or is this something that you just kind of started as a hobby and eventually became something that you, uh, you know, could do for a living? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of from like, I learned it through music. Like it was my way to get into concerts for free. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin originally. Okay. And, uh, I went to just like a lot of hardcore shows and just brought my camera and the promoters would just let me in for free and I would just shoot and I originally got, I was in yearbook at school, but I, I didn't have any formal training. Mostly just going to shows, taking a lot of pictures, and then eventually meeting bands like A Data Member. And uh, Kevin, who's in A Data Member, used to be in this band called Four Letter Lie from their mm-hmm. victory band from Minneapolis. And they were actually the first band I toured with. And I just met them by like kind of being an ignorant, like not really knowing my own boundaries kid from Wisconsin who would, you know, go into bands dressing rooms and be friends with <laughs> be friends with them and eventually they're like all right we're friends we're gonna do photo shoots and we'll go on tour oh, so. you're one of, you were yeah. one of those guys adam yeah okay. i was that i, I, know, I, 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 I met well <laughs> <laughs> oh it's never a bad thing it's just uh, it's, it's always funny <laughs> Guilty. that's fantastic sorry no <laughs> nothing to apologize for there yeah it worked out very well so the last time neil that we actually saw each other was back in what was it like 2018 19 18 no yep. 17 Whatever the fuck it was, we did uh, we did some a handful of shows together. 2017, yeah. 2000, whatever the fuck it was. August, July. It's like feels like shows. it was like not even that long ago because Young of COVID. Jamie, look it up. <laughs> wait, wait, I have it on my notes. It was July <laughs> slash August of 2017. That yeah, is correct. And it was uh, you guys were on the cycle for Bad Vibrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that album was incredible thanks again for Thank doing you. those shows that was uh, yeah, you guys fucking killed it on the on those on those we shows were, it was awesome we were fucking hyped we were excited to do that i mean because we we had toured with marvin he had come out with us and he just told us how awesome you guys were and oh he lied to you guys did he? and huh oh he lied <laughs> to you did he <laughs> unsung hero marvin here <laughs> yeah how important crew members are they're making stuff making tours happen <laughs> yeah awesome. absolutely i mean we we listened to you guys like growing up and I remember like the first time I saw you guys was actually on tour with My Chemical Romance. Wow. Oh, wow. But like you, I think you guys were headlining. Yeah, yeah, we and, were. Uh, and you guys took them out. Mm-hmm. It was like forever ago. I was just on somebody else's podcast earlier this afternoon. And that conversation got brought up that um, it was actually right before I'm OK became a, a huge single. And that album blew up. We Such had album. taken them out on tour. And... Um, you know, towards the end of it, uh, Gerard and a couple of the guys were like, hey, this is our new album. It just got pressed. It's going to be released in a few weeks here. Give it a listen. What do you guys think? And we saw the it's energy, like, the punk rock energy that they had on stage, heard that album and went, oh, fuck, this is yeah. about to blow up. <laughs> and Holy it was shit. like it was at that moment that we were like, this is this is awesome. Well, we, we had already befriended them. They're great guys, obviously. Um, but we had no idea what their potential was at that point. And then when we heard their what was going to be their next record at the time. And then the other part of it, Gerard was backstage a few times telling me about this Umbrella Academy comic that he was working on. This was back, back in, then? Yeah. So he was working on it that long ago. Wow. He, I don't think he had a title for it. Don't I mean, this was at least 16 years ago, so don't don't quote me on the details. But it was... He was definitely working on comics at the time, and I believe it, it ended up becoming this Umbrella Ca- Academy, which was comic book, and then now, you know, is, massive yeah. Netflix season or series. Yeah. So, I mean, it was amazing. Like, like now I look back at it, and 
the success that they had as a band and went on in the way family what they've gone on to do is simply incredible so that was that was your first introduction you were saying neil to avenge yeah to uh to you guys like i had like listened to you guys a lot up until that but that was like the first time i got to see you live and that was the first time i saw my chemical romance as well and i was just like because i had listened to the album before three cheers i think is what it's called yeah it is three cheers you're right uh and it was kind of rad i was like you know um our bass player josh like he liked them way more than I did. And so mm-hmm. he, I was like, let's go to the show. I was like, I like Avenged Sevenfold. And he, he liked My Chemical Romance. I'm like, all right, so sweet. We'll go to the show. And um, that was the first time that I got to see you guys live. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. Because it we, I where I'm from is Ocala, which is like a small town in Florida. Um, we would drive to like the House of Blues. And that was like a big show for us. We were like. The House of Blues the House in of Blues. Orlando? Yeah. What okay. year is this? Uh, give me a give me a time frame here. Is this two thousand five? Two thousand five, probably, or two thousand. Yeah, because if it was, if you came out earlier, to see Mike Ken with us, you know, what I want. Yeah, it had to have been waking. I don't think I don't think we had uh, City of Evil yet out yet when we were touring with them. Or if we did, it would. It might have just come out. Actually, I think we were touring for. Uh, yep, we were touring for City of Evil, but it was brand new. It had not okay. uh, broken over uh, as we would later find out it would, but at the time it w- we were we were toying for the new record City of Evil, I believe. I was like, I had to explain it to my friends. I'm like, this band has sick breakdowns. <laughs> I was like, trust me, I'm there. We can go mosh. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. And then we and then Josh was like, dude, my couple of romance is like really cool. And we're like, yeah, Josh, no, it's cool. But uh, <laughs> they are really. We're cool. like, they don't have breakdowns though. Like we all we cared about was like hardcore and like you know hardcore. Well, that comes through in, in in a day to remember too, though. I, I absolutely love what you guys have have done with your music, especially over the years from you know the evolution of it. But you know the the precipice of it really being, as you pointed out, you guys are really into breakdowns, really into the hardcore yeah. scene, but very very much still some roots and some melodic punk stuff, and you, and it comes through and uh, and. Um, uh, I gotta I gotta bring up the new single that just came out, uh, Mind Reader, right? That was in oh, yeah. April. It's a few yep. months out now. Um, that I listened to that song and it was a little bit more punk than I was expecting. Uh, there wasn't a lot of the hardcore roots to it. Um, obviously, it's a single. Is there a new album follow up to this at some point? And yeah. in that, is yeah. it gonna be is it gonna be more of of Mind Reader vibe or is it kind of Par for the course, you're going to have some mind readers and you're going to have some paranoias as well. It's, where's the uh, album, Neil? Where's the album? Yeah, where's the album? Oh, That's no, like I'm not doing that to joke. you. I get enough no, of that uh, on our end. <laughs> I'll I was going to say, I was gonna say everyone, knows, everyone knows how to... If you're in a band, you know how it is. Like, yeah. ob- obviously, like uh, this is our first time kind of working with a new label. We're working with Fuel By. We did, we did the last two albums, put them out ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one, it's, it's kind of pushing the boundaries. Uh, in the sense that like there is stuff like mind reader but i feel like every song kind of has its own uh like life to it as as weird as that is like like mind reader doesn't sound like resentment like resentment doesn't sound like our other song that we put out and there's we actually jeremy hit me up yesterday and he's like yo um i have this new song (laughs) and we (laughs) And we we literally our whole album's like been done mixed. Uh, we're just literally trying to finish the artwork, uh-huh. um, trying to figure out how we're going to release it, and trying to figure out what the plan is as far as like not being able to tour and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's a that's a big question for everybody right now. So we're like um, we're like in the middle of finding that out, and Jeremy hits me up yesterday. He's like, "Yo, what do you think about this?" I'm like, "Fuck, uh, that's really fucking good, man." I was like, "That has to be on this album." He's like, "I think so too," uh, and so now the whole fucking well, that might be a silver lining of this whole pandemic. You have to postpone it, it. You know, you might have to get back in the studio and add a song to the record. I mean, I think that like that's at least what we're gonna have to do. Yeah. But it's like to kind of answer your question a little bit better. Uh, it is all over the place. It sounds like our band, but just the 2020 version of it. Like whereas Bad Vibrations was more like raw. Like we went and recorded with Bill Stevenson from The Descendants and Black Flag. Dude, I got to ask then, about that, by the way. Super raw, super like kind of organic feeling like uh, Andy Wallace makes it. So it's like just, you know, raw energy, whatever. 
This one is more like a day to remember. Um, kind of, we are like experimenting with like splice sounds and like trying out new amps and new, just new things, like things that feel new to us, stuff that we want to hear that like isn't necessarily represented right now in rock music, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the best part about a day to remember. Yeah. In my opinion, you guys can do all that stuff. Like, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's I a think fantastic that we have freedom. done a decent job of being able to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. If I can say that without sounding any <laughs> negative, you know, I don't know. No, there's nothing negative no here negative. at all. No, that, yeah, no, that's awesome. No, that that's, I mean, that's art, right? You got to continue yeah. to do something new every time or, you, you know, I mean, for most of us, I mean, and no, no knock on the uh, other artists that continue to do the same thing and find their niche. And, you know, we love them for them. The, the ACDCs of the world fucking yeah, yeah. love every record they put out. Yeah. It sounds very similar to the one that they put out the, with the album before. But I still fucking love it, you know. And, and, but there is the other artistic side, you know. Music is an art, movies are art. Everything, it's all up to an opinion. So what you got to do is make it for yourself and hope that everyone gets your vision, right? So that's yeah. really cool that you guys are are pushing the boundaries and continuing to push the boundaries because this this isn't the first time you guys have done that. Obviously, you've had several albums now where you've where you've continually tried to outdo yourselves, right? Yeah, it's like we just argue with each other and then like whenever we get to the end we're like yeah we like that it's like <laughs> just a big argument and then like we're like this needs a breakdown and then someone's like no make a chorus double as long and we're like all right we have a song this is great <laughs> <laughs> well you know uh you know writing with a band is different than uh you know especially if you have everyone involved is different than a lot of artists writing by themselves right there's yeah. there's not the same checks and balances as you were just kind of alluding to i believe uh, you gotta have thick skin in a band. If you're gonna write with everybody, Absolutely. you gotta you put yourself out there and know that you know nine out of ten times someone's gonna be like, man, eh, it's not good enough. You'd be like, man, I really well, took a lot of time on that. <laughs> a lot of time, a lot of times, you know, whenever you're creating art, you're not in the same room when you're presenting it to somebody else. Yeah, you know, like, uh, like, you know, if you make a painting, you put it out there, people see it. You, you don't have to be there to see the reaction if they hate it. Yeah. So like if you're in a in a group with like five other guys or four other guys or whatever, you bring a riff and someone's like, "That's nah, that's not cool." You have to literally look. They look you <laughs> look in the you eye. In the and eye. Like, yeah, it's, I don't it's a different like thing. that. I'm so glad you. Or brought they're that up like, now. "Let's change that and make it better by doing this." And you're like, "You're changing okay. the entire riff that I just wrote." Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> you're, you're right. It's you have to have thick skin. You're it's, changing it's, my baby. I mean, yeah. you you Adam as 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 a photographer, you don't have to deal with this as much. You just uh, kind of put it together and you say this I mean, is what I, it is or what. I enjoy watching their process. I was thinking when you were saying like you don't get to see the reaction to it. I was just gonna jog Neil's memory and say that one tour. I think it was 2014, maybe Parks and Devastation. You guys had a VIP meet and greet and would randomly select like ten people. To oh, come yeah. in your dressing room and listen to their new unreleased record with them, that and was then look weird. at the reactions, and that was wild. That, that was, was a, cool. That was a very weird experience because that's a pretty cool you idea. You think that. that it was cool. You think that like if they're like really big fans, they would be like really excited about it, but like they literally, you just watch them sit there and digest it, and, and they're just like this in their zone, and then they'd be done, and they'd be like. <laughs> you're like you're like i also, need so i need something out of you i mean do you, are you there yeah <laughs> either flip me off room. and leave the room or you know <laughs> give me a hug give me something here something <laughs> anything yeah, you, you also have these fans that you literally just pulled from a meet and greet which is already like pretty high level of excitement yeah and put them in a room with their favorite band before their show and sat them down in front of them and said listen to this music while your favorite band watches you like it's I can't a, imagine they were anything less than like nervous. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I didn't even think about it like that, but that is pretty <laughs> fucked up. Like just like no, it's not fucked on. up. I mean, it, it's fucked up in a sense, but it's also kind of amazing because yeah. I mean, you, you took the VIP experience to a different level. I mean, like you know, years ago I would see a lot of like memes. I guess is what they're called. But uh, you know, I'm getting a little older. Uh, but like whatever it was, and there, you know, it show like. You take a quick picture with someone because you got the meet and greet and then you're off. You guys yeah. gave a little bit more of a thing, you know, that, and that's really cool. I mean, the Avril Lavigne one where they're like standing like, 
<laughs> and that <laughs> was pre-COVID. Like it might be that <laughs> yeah, way for the rest of us like, moving forward. But that <laughs> there's a pl- plexiglass <laughs> divider between them now. Yeah, <laughs> I have to be honest. I totally understand because of COVID. Like I didn't understand before, but like I've seen like some of these like like uh, there's like these like um, demonstrations that show like when two people talk. And like you see the particles oh, yeah. coming out of each other's mouth. Oh, Jesus. I'm like, oh my God. You're going to turn me into a fucking germaphobe here, man. Like I, I'm all about wearing a mask, of course, and, you know, social distancing, uh, you know, but I don't want to become a germaphobe either. <laughs> yeah, same. I, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain level that I'm like, when is too much? And I'm well, like you... with you where I'm like, I just kind of, it has to be enough to live in, but I also want to be respectful and. Well, that's the whole thing. It, it all comes back to respect. I mean, not to get yeah. too crazy on this, but we got to touch about it in a little bit. We, we're talking about it already. You guys have toured all over the place. You guys have Don't toured in Asia. That? This isn't anything yeah. new. Like, everyone in oh, Asia, no. like, it, they have the sniffles. They throw a fucking mask on just because it's it's nice. Like They throw yeah. a mask on when they take the bus. I mean, when exactly. they take the train. You know, yeah. Day. And yeah, you know, a mask isn't the most comfortable thing in the world, blah, 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 blah. But is it the end of the fucking world? It's really oh, it's not the, the least. End of the fucking world. It's Neither the least pants. we could do. Yeah, it's just it's just not that. I get everyone wants to have their freedom and everything. I'm all about that. But here's the deal: you can also just not be an asshole and care about like fellow man. It's not that big of a deal. True. But it's hard work. too for us. It's hard too for us because we're like, look, we're the we were the first people to have our what we do taken away, and we will probably be the last people to have it come back. And that. Every time I see someone like kind of arguing about not wearing a mask, I'm like, look, it doesn't really affect you. But like there's an entire world of people that rely on live music, that need live music for like their own self-help, their own Mm -hmm. like kind of mental therapy, their own escapism. It's like, man, just wear a mask. Just put it on. It's the least we could do. There's so many people that it's not even like a life. Like it is life or death. But on top of that, like just people's life it just helps you know, like, i mean and that's the other thing is the argument is always a well it's not 100 percent effective yeah neither is a condom but when you go fuck you throw a fucking condom exactly. on right <laughs> exactly you know like that's exactly. not 100 percent perfect you know but it's better than nothing um uh, it doesn't feel as good i guess this is the argument there but uh yeah i digress um uh, speaking <laughs> of though like with the with with the touring you you brought it up as it's like a uh it's, it's it's a livelihood not only uh, for our our pockets, and that's always a thing. Oh, woe is you! You get to tour for a living. Set that aside for your mental health. It's something yeah. that we've set out to do our entire lives, and we finally get to do it. And now it's being taken away in 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 so many respects, and it's a bummer. Um, it is. What I mean, I saw your post, Adam. It's like your lone post right now um, on your Instagram, uh, which oh, yeah. is <laughs> at Mel, uh, which is at El Macias. Did I say it right again? Okay. (laughs) El Macias. At El Macias, everybody. Photographer extraordinary. Um, He's got one post up right now, which is (laughs) what artists really do. I don't do that because I'm not an artist. But he's he's got his one post up. And it's uh, you in the back of the bus in front of of a computer. Yeah, I fell asleep at my computer. Missing the road. (laughs) And uh, this is a reality for all of us uh, who are used to the, the road travels on a bus or whatever it may be. Um, take me through your guys' mindsets right now of, of like when do you think it's going to happen if you want to even venture into that because we all know that there's no guarantees on any of that but where are you mentally like how much are you really missing it are you actually enjoying a little bit of downtime where are you mentally with this non-toy you want to go Neil uh, sure I mean I I uh, I don't know. Like <laughs> for me, I've had so many things that I've wanted to do for however long, uh, and we've been touring like pretty much nonstop since I have been an adult. So um, there's been a bunch of things that I've wanted to do that I've been able to do, but at the same time, I kind of just feel lost. You know, like like I, me and my wife are opening a restaurant. Um, I've mm-hmm. kind of started to do the Twitch thing. Adam and I have been doing this podcast. Uh, we're also having a child. 
So it's like Not there me. is there's a ton of the yeah. Wait, you having a child with kid. Adam? Congratulations, um, you two! It's a small alien. That was baby. Uh, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> this is the first. Uh, wh- which one of you is burying the child? Uh, We're going to be more famous than My Chemical Romance on Three Cheers. <laughs> uh, two men having a child for the first time. <laughs> two men and um, a baby, not three yeah. men. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's been it's, it's been comedy. crazy. I, I I don't feel like I don't think that anything could have prepared for this amount of time home, uh, but it's been nice it's been a challenge uh let me ask a yeah. let me ask a question about that though neil like uh throughout touring i've run into different people like there's your introverts and your extroverts just like they are out in the you know the regular world i guess for lack of a better term um but there are musicians that are introverts out there you know and, yeah. and it, it seems kind of oxymoronic in a way right because you're around people and you this is your profession you're out touring where do you lie on that? I'm more of an extrovert, so I I'm like having fucking FOMO like crazy right now. Yeah. But like I, I, the podcast has kept me alive. Being able to talk to you guys has, has kept me going for real. But, this is kind of nice. I actually I was just thinking that same thing. Uh, I'm I'm like fifty fifty. So I am fifty percent extrovert, fifty percent introvert. Mm-hmm. Not like whatever. What is the what's the test? Out. What's the test? Like the Briggs Myers test or whatever. The Briggs Myers test. Have you tested? Have you have you taken it? Yeah, like yeah, four yeah. letters. Is that the I don't. What did you end up? What, do you remember what you were? I don't remember the exact um, letters. It was like I J. I don't remember the other ones, but I they they did say that I was fifty percent extrovert, fifty percent introvert, like mm. evenly. And I like to go out and talk to people, but I have to come back and recharge my batteries for like almost equal amount of time. Mm-hmm. So like I can go and be like super lively and then like for three days you won't see me so like it's kind of like i, I, I exist in that it, it's really weird i don't I, know i think i'm less than 50 50 i'm probably 75 extra 25 intro but uh i did the bricks and Meyer uh uh a thing and i was called a campaigner at the end of it whatever that was it was a campaigner adam have you tried this is i i list while you were, we were talking i looked up a screenshot when my old roommate had me take this is it Mine says I N F J dash A. Is that Briggs Meyer? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, that yeah. is. But if you if you take those letters and you put them, it gives you like a advocate. Yeah, it gives you like yeah, like kind of an avatar almost, if you will. Like there's like a mine looks like a wizard. Nice. Which I'm wizard? totally down with. I want to cast spells. That's pretty <laughs> insane. I N F J dash. You are a wizard. I, now yeah. that I think about it, you probably do know. Yeah, some mine magic. says advocate. Advocate. Okay. Yeah. Assertive advocate. Okay. That makes sense. I don't know what that means, but I like it's an alliteration, so that's cool. And my name is Adam, so there you go. Yeah. Assertive advocate Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, if you haven't already and you're really interested in finding out, go take that test. It's it's actually really interesting, fun to fucking do. Um, it is. And you got the time. Yeah. So. You already mentioned a few things, Neil, uh, that I was going to ask about, so now i got to bring him back up. Um, congratulations, by the way. You have a kid on the way. Do you have yes. uh, the, the sex found yet? Yes. She she, she is going to be a girl. Awesome. She <laughs> yes. is going to be a girl. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least, at least at the beginning, you know, it's 2020. We don't know what she's yeah, going to exa- identify as She later. will decide who she is. They are, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever I, it is. Whatever, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> you're, you're a parent now. You don't have to know. You just, you just yeah. kind of go, yeah, You whatever. can figure that out now. I'm just going to facilitate whatever <laughs> you're, you need. You're gonna get whatever it is, I love you. That's all you have to say. You're yeah. a parent now. Table. Whatever yeah. it is, I love you. Um, exactly. You know, uh, so you're excited. Obviously, I have to ask the question, was this, were you guys trying? Were you and your wife trying? Or was this by accident? Was this, uh, you know, a late night uh, kind of whiskey night? Or was was this per- very no, we, purposeful? We were trying for a while. Uh, and we had a couple miscarriages. Oh, I'm sorry. Which, you know, it's kind sorry of a heavy subject. But, but, you know, whatever, it happens. Um, we were kind of trying for a while. And then we were like, all right, you know, we're going to kind of switch focus. And my wife, is obvi- she is a chef. And so we were like, all right, we're going to open this restaurant. Mm-hmm. and um, we're like we're not going to try anymore and then literally like I think we found a place uh, signed a lease on this place and she's like hey by the way baby, I'm pregnant <laughs> um, and I'm like uh, shit 
all at once. <laughs> wait. You're never ready for that. You're ne- yeah. even when you're trying, you're never ready for that. I was like, wait, uh, and a baby. Wow. I was like, kind of like that's a lot. Um, <laughs> and she's like, no, don't worry. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be fine. Um, it. She like kind of did like thought about it. You know, she's like, if when the baby comes, like our baby's due date is January 9th. So okay. if it comes full term, um, we will ho- have had the restaurant open for three months by then in perfect world. Mm-hmm. The restaurant is supposed to open in like two weeks. So we're like wow. right there on the wow, cusp man. of doing that. You're taking that. time? You're taking time out of that whole prep to have whiskey with me? I appreciate oh. that. This is incredible. Oh, man. I was so excited. Whenever Marvin brought this up, I'm like, yeah, let's fucking do it. I'm hyped. <laughs> Um, Dude, con- again, congratulations. Do you have a name picked out for the daughter yet? Yes. I think, uh, well, we are going to call her Amelia Wild Westfall. So Amelia Wild Ooh, Westfall. That's a good middle name. That is. I wanted, wow, I wanted Wild rad. to be a first name, but. Wild Westfall is pretty fucking rad. Dude, I think that's <laughs> such a cool name. W- I, W-I-L-D or is there an E? W-Y-L-D-E. Ooh. Ooh. Mary's doing, yeah, she's doing her little. Let's go. You know how they do the women. They get like they get it in there. They, they get like wild. Make, they make regular shit cooler. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's just doing that. <laughs> I was like, let's just call it wild. She's like, let's not. How long have you guys been married? Um, we have been married for just over two years. So our uh, two year anniversary was October fifteenth. Oh, wow, congratulate! Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you. Just happened. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Um, I think whenever we toured together, like, uh, it was like right around whenever my wedding was. So, like, I think we like went home after that and made it happen. Did that have anything to do like with that. the uh, bottle of tequila and the bear that you gave us? <laughs> it might have. Do you remember this? Do you, so yeah, at the, the end, giant, the end of the tour, there's the a gigantic. giant stuffed bear with a day to remember <laughs> uh, merchandise. He had the shirt on. And a bottle of our favorite tequila, by the way. So thank you very much for that. The best tequila. It is the What's best. The Don Julio, tequila? 1942. Fantastic. Oh, man. I would so bring good. out my bottle from the bar, but I actually just finished it last night and you go to the store. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then we sent you back a, a really nice video, a, a really nice thank you video. And uh, for those of you who haven't already seen it, you could go to Avenged Sevenfold's Instagram, scroll all the way back to 2017 <laughs> and watch me pretending to fuck a stuffed bear um, <laughs> while our roadie, uh, Jason Barry, um, pretends that it's licking his asshole as he jerks off. Um, and that's what we sent you guys back in uh, thank you for uh, the end of the tour uh, gift. We knew we, were fr- we knew we were <laughs> friends at that moment. I was like, man, I love these guys. <laughs> wow. It was, it was fantastic. I do appreciate the gift, and it did not go to waste, so you know. Uh, yeah, we were, we were excited. You know, we um, like I was saying, we kind of looked up to you guys and kind of followed you guys' career for a long time. And to be able to do that, it was really cool for us. So, um, I mean, we hopefully will be able to be touring again soon. Like, I don't know about you guys, but we're kind of planning on doing uh, right now. As I don't know how things are going, but we're we have some shows booked for summer of next year, and mm-hmm. like I don't know Europe. I think Europe's going like, to grass pop, buddy. Yeah. We're going to Grass Pop. We're doing download and all that. Grass kind of Pop stuff. is a, Grass Pop is a is a fun festival. That's that's the it one is. that's like Belgium. super eclectic. Like I remember yeah. doing Grass Pop. We were on one stage, um, headlining like one of the side stages, and then I remember waking up one morning, and uh, what's the band that does Mbop? Uh, why am I trying to? Oh, Hanson. Hanson. Hanson yeah. was was opening up like one of the stages, and I woke up one morning. And I was like. Am I here? Is this for real? Am I hearing Mbop right now? Like, <laughs> I just woke up. It's like 2008. And I'm like, Grass Pop. Fuck must, yes. Puckle I went and checked him out. It, it was fucking ph- phenomenal. It was a great show. It might be Puckle Pop, too. Wait, d- Puckle Pop's similar. Were you with us when we did uh, Grass Pop? What is it like? Was it last year or was it two Which, years ago? Well, we've done it twice when I've been with you, I believe. We did it where we watched. That was the Deep Purple thing, right? Oh, when and Deep Purple. Yeah, oh. there was, it was Slipknot too. The other two year, I'm Slipknot. getting, I'm getting it confused. I'm, what was the festival that Billie Eilish played right before us, and she absolutely not should not have played before us. She should have like definitely I played after pro- us. I don't <laughs> think she I was, was with fucking you. massive. I am sure Neil, you are not the only person that has said that because oh my God. whatever anybody that has played after her, and you know, well, her and her brother, um, yes. I'm sure has felt the same way and been like. Yeah, that yeah, that was amazing. I like, <laughs> went, I like 
I like went and watched it, had my mind blown. I had been a fan of her for a little while. And just the response that she got. I'm like, man, this must have been something like where they booked her like a year ago. Yeah. And she, she the- wasn't like big yet or something. And then they booked us and they're like, oh, yeah, date remember, whatever. And then we played. <laughs> I don't and I was think just they just like, said whatever, is, but I, get, I was I like, get. that is not. Well, I mean, next to Billie Eilish, it was, <laughs> I felt like a whatever. I have to be honest with you. It was, uh, it was, that was a wild experience. Yeah. I can imagine. Uh, I think you were playing Reading. Were you playing Reading or Puckle Pop? It looks like you played with them twice in 2019. Her twice. Oh, Puckle Pop. Puckle I got to point out the fact. One, I, Puckle Pop is Belgium. Or no, it's Puckle Pop is similar to. Yeah, that one's pretty. It's Belgium also, and it's very. I get those eclectic. two confused. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I'm, 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 I'm loving your guys' banter already on my podcast. I can only imagine how uh, "Don't Shit on the Bus" is going to be. This is perfect because <laughs> you already have Adam. Who is going to obviously be the fact checker? He's he's oh, already yeah. got his computer out and he's like, "Yep, I'm gonna make I'm sure." I'm the nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love writing shit down, graphing it out, like whatever. And Neil's got, I could listen to Neil talk about nothing. So you he's know, he's got that. You he know, Adam, a, it, it, he has our, he has like a, a a guide of things that we should talk about in the these first fifteen episodes, just to make sure that they are informative. Everything's like, mapped out. And I'm just like talking shit. I'm riffing. I'm like, remember that one time when I shit in a bag and I threw it out the window and the bus driver <laughs> stuck his hand in the poop on the side of the bus and he tried to fight me? And he's like, yeah. Um, uh, next so, bullet point, Neil. Yes. He's is, like, is, maybe is we that a shouldn't story? talk about is that. Is that story yeah, no, already happened on the, that on the show? That is a real story. That, <laughs> not on the show yet. That did not happen. on the show. So I get, I get it first. Okay, let me, let yeah, me hear the story. You get let me hear the story. Yeah. Is that the whole story? Neil, is that the whole the story? story oh, the whole story. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, was I here for this? That sounds disgusting. I no, thought you made you that were, up. I think you were on tour with us. It was... We were in Europe. We had that bus driver. His every name was Don. St- every he, story uh, starts like, hey, what's going on in Europe? Uh, well, Europe... <laughs> we're in Europe, Europe on a double-decker bus and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, Europe touring is like nuts because it's like everything closes... <laughs> everything closes early in Europe. So like you're done mm-hmm. with the show and like you get on the bus and go on... Like you get on the highway or whatever, and you go to get food, and everything is closed. Yeah, so, why is stuff cl- and it's closed on Sunday. Like, what is yeah. going on? So, how many times? It, so, you guys have been back to Europe several times. The first few times, I had these exact uh, problems, and what what I learned is you're traveling in between the big cities overnight, so you're getting fucked by going through the small cities that close down. The big cities oh. do not close down that way. The big cities, uh. if you if you hub out of somewhere. And keep coming back to someone like say. See, that's what we gotta do. Neil, you're you're fucking up, man. (laughs) We gotta get a PJ. We gotta get a PJ, and we. You gotta tell fucking Marvin to up his fucking game. Is what you do, Marvin? What the fuck? He's traveled with us. He knows. He knows the ropes. Why isn't he fucking doing it for you guys? This is some bullshit. All I know is Marvin's fucking up, man. Yeah, yeah. Marvin's the best. (laughs) I like call him right now. I'm like, look, Marvin. All right, so. You know what we should have planned is is sending him this Zoom as well and asking him just to come on for like a second. That would have been right. We should. All right, here. I mean, let's text him right it. now. He's he's on that email, right? He's on that chain right, that we started this I'll thing. I'll text him. I got the Zoom link because I sent it to Neil. Yeah, send it to Marvin. <laughs> I got it. You well, know he'll get on. He's just he's already on top of his shit. Yeah. No. 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 He's, he's probably just, at home ready just, for meetings. I messaged him and I wrote I left, I just wrote let's fucking go. <laughs> he'll pop in here real quick. Oh yeah, he'll know. You guys are gonna have to put a whole other TV on. I looked at your setup. We're gonna have to Photoshop a whole extra TV for him. Oh no, that's you can fun. have a, I don't know, pop up if he hops in here. Cool. If not, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna. I I have. To, I just have to ad- ad- admit him when it comes up. Um, but in the meantime, but while we're waiting for that, um, couple of things. Uh, one, before he even gets on here, because I don't want. I don't want to hear about it while he's here. What are your guys' <laughs> first impressions of Marvin as? your tour manager so like he came on as assistant for us for a while he was a good friend um view through mutual friends then he came on as the tour manager for you guys so what was he given to you guys from management first or how did you guys meet and what was your first impressions we um we actually met marvin through uh this girl uh-huh. Casey, no. Casey was um, mm. doing that foundation. I don't know whatever it's called. Uh, yep, Live, uh, living the dream, oh, living the dream. Or no, yeah, we, yeah, living the dream. So Carvin or Marvin was dating Casey. We met Marvin that way a couple times. Whatever. I was like, ah, oh, Marvin's pretty cool. And then um, our our manager John was like, hey, we we have never been able to keep a steady tour manager. 
we have always been like we had guy sykes who was with pantera forever mm-hmm. um and he was also with volbeat so he kept going back and forth with volbeat and then we had andrew weiss who was with metallica forever and then he's with paramore now and 21 pilots and so we always have these like big a-level guys but we're like this band in the in-between where like there's always like other bands that are going to pay him more than we can and we're like we just can't like we love you guys and we'd love to be able to pay you and bring you out but we just can't Mm because we're just not like 21 pilots big or metallic or whatever so i just have to ask it wasn't the same case as like for us because we had some we we gone through a lot of tour managers and most of the reasons was they decided to leave because we (laughs) It might. We pissed uh, them I mean, off at airports once or twice. I can't I don't say know. that's not the case. <laughs> Johnny, I'm supposed to tell you to <laughs> tell Jobin to let Jobin to Jobin. let me in. Jobin. Jobin. He said, "Tell Jobin to let me in." <laughs> let me. Is he is he on right now? Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's on. Hold on one second. We're about to bring on Marvin. I used Torres. to have a picture of Marvin on my wall. I have a picture of Marvin that I keep okay, on my wall. Okay, that's a little weird, Adam. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna it's need him to see and Josh that eating a hundred chicken nuggets in in uh in Europe. You know, oh like those God. late night stops. We got a hundred chicken nuggets, and they're just eating them. You know, I've heard that story, Adam. Yes. All right, Marvin, you got to turn on your fucking video, though. Oh yeah, right. We're not looking at your name. There he is, Marvin. Marvin yes. Torres. Hey man, wearing your Lakers shirt. Is that a Warren? Is that a Warren Lattis Lakers shirt? Oh no, it's just it's better. It's bootleg. <laughs> Super pixelated champions. Oh yes, <laughs> Steve Cesar. <laughs> Look how blurry that is. Would you buy that from? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You know what, though, oh Marvin? If God. you're gonna if you're gonna wear the the Lakers T-shirt, you gotta have the Dodgers hat on at least. I mean, we got we got L. A. dueling. Oh, LA it all. get the fuck out of here with your Yankees bullshit. What what you drinking, <laughs> Marv? What you drinking? Drinking a Sauvignon Blanc. Very uh-huh. nice. But from what got, from what region of the world, my friend? Uh, from the region of Hesperia, California, where I'm born. Ooh. Very nice. So you're born from there, yet you're still a Yankees fan. What the fuck is wrong with you? I thought you were from Hemet. <laughs> no. So we were talking about you, Marvin. That's why we had to bring you on. A lot of people are going to be really confused on this when they when they watch the podcast because they're going to be like, or, or they watch or listen, whatever they're fucking doing. They're they're going to be like, uh, who's this Marvin guy? Jeremy. One of the unsung heroes of of the touring world Jeremy. is is who this guy is. I, I am the man of the shadows. He is the connection between all of us. So uh, yeah. Adam just pronounced it incorrectly. Uh, he called me Jobin instead of uh, Jobin. He, he, Jobin. <laughs> Jobin. What is that movie? What movie is that from? It's actually not. It's. I think it was probably derived from a long night of a hotel room drinking and. <laughs> No, that's it's never happened, it. Marvin. I love you, man. And then it, it is. It is. I love you, man. It is. You got it. I love you, man. He's like, I love you, Jobin. Jobin. But it started off with Job skin. All right, so I didn't get I didn't get the full answer yet before you came on, Marvin. So now you're gonna have to listen to it. And I want full honesty out of Adam and Neil here. What did you guys first think? Like you started to Neil, you started to say how you guys met. Yeah. Um, but now I now I need to know what your first impression was and uh, uh, how you guys first got along? Was it a strip club? Was it whiskey? Was it beer? Whatever the fuck it was. What was we the first impression? Co- we've happened? been to. A, um, we have been to strip clubs be- before. You got Marvin um, to go to a strip club. I've never been able to do that. No, we. Well, so <laughs> Marvin was always like the. Uh, he's very um, responsible. Very responsible. Everything was always uh, responsible for what everything <laughs> always guys. no i mean like whenever you first came on tour with us like I'm trying to think i don't think we're that wild of guys you know mm. but we'd always be like it would be like an off day we're like let's go hang out and you're like uh i got emails i gotta do uh <laughs> you'd always have the yeah. out that's fair so when did when was the first Martin time he let loose with partner. you i know he had to have let loose with you guys at some point otherwise he wouldn't still be working with you 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 wouldn't you oh would've... what i mean the first night i hung out with mary we went we were in portland and it was on the Blink Tour. That was the strip club we went to because it had food or something. I don't remember <laughs> why we went there. And it smelled it weird. Fries. Yeah, <laughs> like French fries. Hey, do you guys have yeah, French like, fries? We'll be there in All a right, second. Okay, there's there's boobs and French fries. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there in a second. 
Marvin, uh, what was the place you took us to for uh, when we were in Atlanta? I think. What What the <gasps> fuck was that place called? Oh, uh, that is. Well, Marvin's good at food. Best slash worst place in the world, the Claremont Lounge. Claremont. Oh, I got a shirt from God. it. I got a T-shirt. I got merchandise from the place. You took me there for my birthday, Johnny. That's right. It was fantastic. I I tried to go to Magic. What's the what the what's the place in L in Atlanta? It was probably like my first week with you guys. Yeah. And some Magic, Magic City, City. <laughs> had me get a limo for you guys at one a.m. to get <laughs> to go to Magic City, and I was just like, no. Yeah, I love yeah, I love I love us. before this story though. Neil was really trying to play off of like, yeah, we're just not that crazy, and then I'm hearing about a limo. <laughs> Being called at one at one a.m. Not already. Being I don't booked. remember these times. So, like, funny. Here about this. Here's how things come full circle. So this said limo taking him to Magic City was the exact same limo and driver that we met on my birthday in Atlanta that drove us around, and you and I broke everything inside. And I, <laughs> I still had his contact in my phone from like four no. years prior because we broke everything and we had to send him money. <laughs> And you yeah. lost something very important in that limo. Uh, that was my uh, wedding ring. Yes. <laughs> you could get that was more my of those. that was they my second like every jewelry store. To correction, that was my second wedding ring that I lost. Oh I've lost gosh. three or four at this point. Moral of the story: Atlanta <laughs> is wild. Same limo. Ended up with Neil four wild. years later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we wanted to go to Magic City because that's where all the rap songs. Like, so if if you're like familiar with any like popular rap they test it out at magic city so like they play all the new rap songs at magic city to see if people like them or whatever i'm like i gotta go to magic city i I, like i've never been before and so marvin's like i was like marvin we gotta go i'm like this is we're very drunk uh on the blink 182 tour uh and i'm like marvin we gotta go he's like i was like can you set it up he's like yeah I, i got a guy so he obviously had a guy from another story. Uh, Marvin's and, always got a guy. But what? Where did we end up going? We went to Cheetahs. Yeah, so I, yeah, I sent Cheetahs you to Cheetahs. Is the big one. Where Johnny and I went. Yeah, Cheetahs is the Cheetahs one. Cheetahs was. It's that was. Yeah, Cheetahs is fun, man. It's it's it a gigantic fun. fucking strip club. It's got like fucking two or three levels to it, if I remember correctly, and fucking <laughs> bunch of. Katie shit going was on. with us. Katie ended up making friends with all the strippers. And then we became friends with the strippers, which is never a good place to be. Because you, you want to be they're, friends they're with the strippers, human beings but too, Neil, come on, man. They always, but they always like. <laughs> I always end up giving them more money than I'm supposed to. Like when I become friends with them. <laughs> one one time. Why we is that a Neil bad thing? Up. These it happens, are. It's not. No, it's not them, bad. Some of them are single mothers, and that's what they're no, doing. I, give I, them the, I give them the extra it. money. I fully <laughs> back we, it. Yeah. But uh, it's always. Bad for me when the next. Hey day Adam, you up. you strike me as as a different kind of cat in a in a in a strip club. How how do you how do you react to a to a lap dance? Um, not well. I generally <laughs> don't like strip clubs, and I have turned down many lap dances that other people have purchased for me. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> say what you want, but it's not my vibe. But I will say, one time we did pick Neil up from a strip club with the tour bus. Do you remember that? It was yes. in um, Pensacola. Oh, that's a big oh, dick move. That's a big dick move. Right it was there. really funny. You're because standing outside and the went. strippers like he having a cigarette playing. next to you. And you're like, you're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm about to hop on that thing. I, uh, <laughs> that was funny. They we talked me into day. being on stage. You were listening to a day to remember when I got there. We got there. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Rad. My friend is the manager. Of, well, my friend was the manager of a strip club in Pensacola. So he talked us into going in there. Uh, and I miss business. I'm sure it's very hard to like, twist your arm to go into a strip oh, club. Oh, I never go to strip clubs. I mean, I don't know what anyone's talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, they they were like, he's like, um, come in, we'll I'll hook you up with drinks, whatever. And I was like, okay. So we get in there. I'm I'm already gone, and uh, we miss bus call by like an hour, and so they have to come. There's only three of us on the bus. They have to come find me with the tour bus at the thing and drag me out of there. I'm like on stage dancing with the strippers. It was really fun. God, I love to a day to remember. How have we not hung out more? I just don't I, understand. Like, Blame this, Corona. This is another time. <laughs> this is a different time in my life. That was old Neil. This is new Neil. No, I'm 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 sure there's still some of that Neil in there somewhere. No, but no, no. no. You, you, you guys you'll, have you'll to, need meet to let up in it Pensacola out. You'll need, yeah. and unleash it. We will. We absolutely will. After you have your your sweet little daughter, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to you got you got some time. <laughs> That you're yeah. gonna have to deal with that shit first, and then you're gonna Mary, be like, be "Man, back. I I miss the old Neil, and I'll I'll Mary's, be right there for you." 
Mary's rad. Mary's uh, she's a she's a strip club uh, goer as well. So isn't that the it's, best? My wife is going goes to strip clubs with me as well. It, it yeah, she it, loves it. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is. Marvin, how about you, Marvin? What's that? What you know about a strip club? Uh, I know about getting kicked out of them with you, Johnny. I've never <laughs> been kicked out of one. I have a. <laughs> Do you remember a place in Pittsburgh where you were wearing an Axl Rose wig? Yes. You got kicked out. I I, I think I graciously wig. left. It, my What's memory that? says my memory says I graciously left. Was this Spearmint Rhino? <laughs> no, it was like just a leaders wall that we went to on like a Monday night. I'm googling. Yeah, we got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I walked around all day in that wig. We went to a, one of those wig places, like uh, it was almost like a weave place where it was real human hair that like a lot of ladies pay a lot of money to put in and like look beautiful and it's fantastic. And I found this red wig with bangs and threw it on. And it's I resembled you. a little bit of Axel from the <laughs> Appetite from Destruction era, and I was like, I'm gonna wear this all day. And, uh, Six years later, that picture is still your caller ID photo on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Amen. Let's see it. There's so many Call things that quick. are coming full circle in this uh, in these stories that we we had no idea. Yeah. Can I, don't I say know. where I met Marvin? Yeah, absolutely, Adam. Get in there. I just looked through my emails. I met Marvin in 2013, emailing him for a photo pass to photograph your band while I was with a day to remember, and you guys were playing the same show. We had tickets to go see your show. Okay, so Where did he get, did he end up giving you that photo pass or did he fuck off? That's what I say, man. He said he said sorry for the delay. We had a photo shoot with Metal Hammer all day, but oh, I was big able, time I messed yeah. up because I didn't bring my camera. But it was my fault. But then I said see him in Australia. But Marvin used to always give me photo passes to Slipknot, and that's how I met him because he, he wait 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 Adam Miami. was that yeah was that show in Atlanta? Um, I don't know. What if it was the same show? Say. Because be if it amazing. was in Atlanta, that all goes back to the same the night before is when we went to the strip. <laughs> oh my gosh! And had a no photos, Johnny. please. <laughs> Johnny is a corpse on stage right now. No photos, please. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh I'm looking up gosh. tour dates. I'll get back to you guys. Okay. I'm. I'm. I, I'm. I'm. Adam, oh I'm gonna God. have to have. I'm gonna oh have to have you on my show. As no, my fact I know what it was. Well. This is gonna, I, I know perfect. what it was. It was the it was the Deftones tour, and I remember this, Neil, because we went to the venue. It was the Deftones Ghost Tour, mm -hmm. and it was um I think it was Atlanta because it was at that Warp Tour venue. Oh, and we it, did it, go to that 100%, show. It is Atlanta. That was the show we went to. Yeah, I remember going to that show. Johnny, the night before is when we went to Cheetahs in Atlanta with the exact same birthday. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. Remember going to that, Neil? We had to like wait outside and back, and then I think Marvin probably walked us in. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably what happened. We yeah, like the, got there as Deftones were playing. Yeah. It was. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. What yeah. hotel That's was that, Marvin, where we had, uh, had Froze for the first time right by the pool? What's Froze? Frosé is frozen rosé. Oh, that makes sense because of the word. Yeah. <laughs> Catching up. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, Adam. I'll, I'll let you. I don't remember what the color was. <laughs> it was it's, uh, it's whatever it was. It was fucking fantastic. We got super hammered by the pool first and then decided it was a good idea to uh, go oh, the strip man. Club. I miss touring so much. Like just these hearing these, these stories. Things, I'm like, just like, it just, uh, it's so true, know. Neil. It's so true, man. Uh, like, oh, you're like, yeah, we got hammered by the pool. I'm like, man, that would be so sick right now. That's I so just wish that I could just. That's like go every and then... sound wave. Well, it's yeah. just like, like touring during like in the fall and winter, and it's like touring with like with you, Johnny. It's like on a Sunday, like we know we're gonna just watch football all day. Yeah. Like, mm. Guaranteed. We're, we'll find a place, even if we're in the middle of nowhere, we'll be like, all right, whose room are we going to and ordering food from and just fucking watching the game? You know? yeah, even in Europe, we bought that hotel package and we just would stay up all night watching football. <laughs> yeah, we were in Europe. We were watching the NBA and, and NFL season a couple years ago. You guys are making me miss tour so hard. It's just like, no. hey, let's, the feeling you get from just going to somebody else's room, everybody's sitting on a bed and watching something together and eating food in some <laughs> random country. Yeah, it's so yeah fun. That, that's the glory that we're talking about. So like there's a lot of people oh in the world God. right now that are like listening to this or, or like have these 
these images in their heads of what it's like to tour. And we're talking about, man, it's great to just order pizza and watch fucking football. <laughs> Because it makes the normal, it makes the like normal, relaxing, peaceful times so much more valuable because they exist at such a lower quantity. So when you get those, and then you also get to hang out with your best friends. Oh, that's so, well, that's the whole in thing. Europe. In Europe, the uh, the like the sporting events are at like four a.m. or whatever time they are. Oh, like, Super Bowl! You have to stay up like super late and like Remember Belushi's. Oh, and there's only one way to stay up super late, right, guys? I mean. Uh, you know, coffee. Um, <laughs> I'll check out of this. What? <laughs> Belushi's. Belushi's is when Neil, we were on a tour. It was a uh, day to remember every time I die and the story so far. And we were trying to watch the Super Bowl and we we're in Germany. So we yeah. went to this place called Belushi's. I think that Which was just sick. Called. And yeah. it was a bar and we we're the only Americans there and it was packed. It was like literally like an overcapacity show. And we were being very American. I have videos of it and you know the every time I had dudes, they get Psychos. crazy. And they were like breaking <laughs> glasses and crowd surfing and like Charlie well, they, was every, they had was crazy. they had the game up on like a massive projector. It was, and it 2 was like it was like a it was like a show. So yeah. like when people would score a touchdown, people were like crowd surfing across this entire bar. And we're like <laughs> Belouche, Belouche and we started a USA chant in yeah, Germany which was that was we were, they let us order chicken wings. They're like, what are chicken wings? We're like, what? Wait, 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 wait. You ordered chicken wings. The guy said, what are chicken wings? Well, like, and you, oh, pers sorry, sorry, and you sorry, proceeded sorry, like, to like, order them anyway? Like, like buffalo wings. We were like, we want like <laughs> buffalo wings. And oh, they're like, call them an American thing, but they don't call it that. Yeah, we were like, can we get buffalo wings? And they're like, what? <laughs> and we're like, you know, like, you know, like, like buffalo wings, like hot chicken wings. And they're like, uh, like chicken. And we're like, yeah, I'm like whatever. <laughs> yeah, we want that. Whatever it is. So he like brings them, and it was like, I mean, you can only imagine. It was the weirdest. It was not buffalo. It was like chicken tikka or some shit. <laughs> like it was just like chicken on a skewer. Or well, that was like, my yeah, question cool. on that. When you started this story there, Neil, I was like, wait, you asked the question. Yeah. He had no idea what you're talking about. Yet you proceeded to continue the order and eat it. Yeah, we thought it was. It's fine. kind of your bad and, at that point. And no, it was definitely our bad. <laughs> but we were still hyped. We were like, this is actually chicken, and. We're, that's cool with us. That's fine. Yeah. I yeah, found those photos. It was speaking good. of food, though, real quick, uh, you brought up uh, your, your new restaurant coming up uh, in yes. the next couple of weeks. You said your wife is yep. is the chef. She is. So she's the one cooking. Um, yep. What kind of cuisine are we, and what's the uh, what's the restaurant name? It, the restaurant is called the Winter Park Biscuit Company. Uh, the town we live in is Winter Park. Uh, it is plant-based southern comfort food. Wow. So all vegan um, I actually met my wife. We were on tour with Blink One Eighty Two, and she was Travis Barker's personal chef. And uh, she lived out in LA forever, and kind of cooked for people out there. And um, she moved here, kind of got off tour. And uh, there's no personal chef needs really for people here in Orlando. It's not like not like in LA, you know, like people <laughs> out there like that's obviously pretty normal. Um. But like here, like, so she came out here and we kind of like talked about opening a restaurant and it's been in the works for like two years and we finally found a place and yeah, two weeks, we're going to get it open. That's amazing. Wild. So what, so, um, you said country, uh, vegan comfort yep. food. Amazing. Yeah, it's like, by uh, the way, can't wait to try it. You guys going to be serving alcohol? This, uh, are vegan? So we good. will absolutely be serving alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to so, uh, be bartending? Are you going to be a special uh, bartender a couple nights or what? I mean, I have, right now, uh, my only job is bartending and maybe dishwasher on the weekends. Uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed in the kitchen. I was going to say that they allow you in the dishwashing area. Okay. <laughs> they don't have dishes. It's COVID. Everything's disposable. You can just use paper. That, Adam's yeah, got a true. point over here. Way to way yeah. to take away my job, Adam. Oh yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, Florida. thanks, brother. Yeah, he's no, trying fine. to tour right now. That was Can't my do only that. fucking job. And that then I you had gotta was fuck with him, Adam. God, Jesus, man. Speaking of uh, you guys, fucking. Speaking of you guys, fucking with each other, I got a whole little Brady bunch of the three of you on my screen right now. Uh, <laughs> I gotta ask each one of you to give me a little bit of dirt on on each other. Like uh, I'm gonna start with oh, Marvin fuck. because he hasn't talked for a minute. Uh, Marvin. <laughs> Give me something about each one of these guys. Give me a night, like even something that like they definitely don't want you to say on air. 
Well, Neo hires him, so yeah, it's, it's gonna, you, gotta, you could say anything you want. I don't give a shit, honestly. It's I probably fine. I mean, to be completely I'm honest, cutting you, I'm cutting you I'm saying that, by the way, Neil. <laughs> I don't do anything. I exist. You don't do anything bad. You're a, you're a good guy. You don't do anything bad. Who said it had Thanks, to be man. bad? Give me, give me a story about him, like, fucking, I don't know, doing something weird on the way to the bathroom or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I am not normal. I will. I'm self. I'm self aware enough to acknowledge that I am different than most. But um, Marvin and I have had some good adventures. We go running a lot. Oh, you that guys are runners. I mean, I think it's something. I don't really actually. To be completely honest, I don't really have anything to say about Adam. He takes over the back lounge when he falls asleep. I yeah. saw that. We we talked about <laughs> that on his post. Yeah. Photo credit to Marvin. Adam's last photo on Instagram is him sleeping on his knees in the back lounge, completely taking over the back lounge. I'm just like, <laughs> Marv took that. Who? Oh, doing? Marvin took that. I was just gonna ask who took that photo. Of course, I took the photo. I went in the back lounge to like go on the phone, and he was just on his knees sleeping. Wait, 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 <laughs> Marvin! You were going in the back lounge to be on the phone. Hmm. A little suspect there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Um. Neil, what do you got? Neil, what do you got for me with Marvin? He's 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 already failed me, so now I'm going straight to you about Wait, Marvin. Marvin might have something on Neil though. We'll come back uh, to that. I want Neil to okay, get him okay, first. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. What do I have on Marvin? <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, Marvin's always the one taking care of me, so I usually have to look. Through. See again, yeah. Neil. You and I are like way too much of the same person. Yeah, you just saying know. that he's the one taking care of you. I don't actually remember the things that I probably should. Uh, I think the only story that I had, I was like, I was like, I was like upset with Marvin because I wanted to go to Magic City in Atlanta and Marvin sent me to Cheetahs, which ultimately was really cool anyways. But I was like, man, I, I wanted to go to that strip club so that I could like, I wanted to see the new rap songs <laughs> and, and then I didn't get to, but it ended up being fine. I mean, the storytelling you just, the storytelling just gave Neil was awesome. Just by the way, like when you hear this back later, but I really wanted to go, you sound amazing. Like you've definitely had a couple of whiskeys because you're like, I really wanted to go, man. I was really bummed when he didn't take no, me. No, he was like, he was just like. <laughs> For like a week and a half. You need to know him. I think he was like that upset at me. He was just like, text me. He was like, what the fuck? I thought we we're going to the other place. And I didn't go. I stayed at the venue. <laughs> I was just like, oh, this place, the other place was closed. Like just made up some bullshit, but this place is open. I'll take care of you. Yeah, like, it's all comped. Like, have fun. <laughs> I, I actually do have a story. I was in LA not that long ago, maybe like a year ago. Well, it's probably like a year and a half ago now. Uh, I was like out there doing like writing sessions or something, and um, I like hit up Marvin. He's like, "Yo, uh, come to this place. We're at. Uh, we're like drinking at this house or whatever." Real quick, Johnny was there, and he was blacked the fuck out. Wait, so I was we were there. <laughs> yes, it was at that. Um, that. Uh, it was the the pitch for that app that Reese was a part of. And the oh, hills. fuck. I wasn't blacked out. I was just extremely hammered. You were blacked out because you could not meet up. You were supposed to meet up with me and Neil at a tequila mezcal bar. And you guys oh, never Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. I'm saying at the house, I wasn't blacked out yet. I, I did not. I, I didn't even. I don't even think I saw you that night. I like. I, we were there, and the only person I remember was Fletcher from Pennywise. I'm like, that guy is fucking so tall. <laughs> like, I can't, like, even. I feel like I'm, like, kind of, like, not, like, a short guy by any means, but, like, I stood next to him. I'm like, no, he's shit, a monster. Man. That's why like, Fletcher has the stories. I actually yeah. saw him at, uh, at Fat Mike's house last month. He was on the show. He we, has we, the stories. We, uh, oh, dude, he has the best stories in the world. <laughs> but we, we played beer pong together and got, and got a little drunk here at the house on the, filmed it for the show he went home he told me uh just just last month when i saw him for the first time since i went home and puked that night and i was like what what you went home and puked i drank the same shit you did and continued to drink after you left i did not puke so on the record right here i out drunk fucking fletcher everyone can suck <laughs> it <laughs> that uh that was like the that was like the one time i was like I was like, yeah, let's go. I'll go hang out, whatever. We go up there and I get there and there's like a, there's like a bar. I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I didn't know that it was like a pitch for 
like some something i didn't know what was going on yeah yeah it was it, i didn't i didn't know what i was doing there either but you know i mean our good friend john reese was really you went for an open bar yeah, yeah I mean, I, i'll show up for an open bar yeah absolutely i mean I, I i showed up with a yeti like this full of uh uh what you're drinking right now marvin sauvignon blanc yeah I had yeah a, you're I, drinking a little, a little kim crawford i had kim crawford, Ooh, kim crawford. This, this size on the way up <laughs> Kim Crawford. I don't good. recommend it to the children. I do not recommend it to the children. <laughs> all right. Yeah, funny. There's all these commonalities. Like, you were supposed to meet up with us that night, Johnny, because Neil came there. You guys were in the same house. Yeah. Didn't even know. So we went to the Kilo Bar and we drank our faces <laughs> off. Yeah. Wait, I don't. I think I was like driving, and then I don't think I was driving anymore. You drove me and uh, we Wait went minute, back no, to you the should not have been driving. <laughs> no, I, I if you like, don't remember saying, driving, like, you shouldn't have been fucking driving. No, I was like, I was driving to get there, and then I don't think I drove. Oh, I like, gotcha. I like left my car somewhere. Yeah, you took it back to the hotel, and then we Ubered over to the bar. Uh, I was, I was about to say because like we got, I, we went to Blind Barber, and I don't remember leaving there. Yeah, we went to the Kilo, but we started at the Kilo Bar. We did a mezcal flight and had beers and mezcal. Then we went to Blind Barber. Then, yeah, then, uh, yeah, I don't. Should have ended at a strip club, but it probably didn't because I had to <laughs> do something. I don't. Remember. I had like writing the next day. I think. I think that was the night that I ate an entire bag of edibles. Um, That's what because I for. didn't. I didn't know like the 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 dosage of it, and I was just like, you know, they were like, they were like, uh, um, goldfish crackers. I'm they like, were late. You're supposed to you eat just eat all one of these. Of those. Yeah, yeah, you're no. not. Yeah, you can't just eat one goldfish. That's like goldfish weird. Are They're handfuls. Yeah, sack. and it was just like a little sack, and I guess the sack was like three hundred milligrams. Okay, when you have when your daughter comes around and she's eating goldfish, make sure you don't mix those two up, though. Oh that, don't gosh. mix those bags up. No, yeah, that would, that be, would be wild, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the world was going to end that night. I, I thought that in my mind, I was already obviously gone. I got back to the hotel, ate the whole thing of edibles. Uh, I thought that I could not sleep with my clothes off in case there was an earthquake and the hotel slid down the side of the mountain. I had to make sure my clothes were on so that I could get out of there. So this is this is great reasoning right there. Uh, the clothes, I was like, I yeah, I mean, I don't follow you right now, but if I had a bag of edibles, <laughs> I'm sure I could follow you down that uh, cliff. Um, <laughs> like that's fantastic. Sure I have For any of you who haven't had falls. edibles yet, um, this is what happens. You have weird fucking thoughts if you oh have an God. entire bag of it. But if you don't have an entire bag, THC is actually fucking wonderful for you. And it's a good oh, way yeah. to take a break from alcohol for a minute. That's my PSA uh, for all the teenagers out Hashtag there. Hashtag sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> can you get sponsored by THC? Is that a thing? You can get sponsored by anything. <laughs> I, All right, that would Marv, be awesome. I'm gonna Marv, I'm gonna hit you up in a minute. Um, outside of this, and I'm gonna edit you out. By the way, um, <laughs> just kidding. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say adieu to you, my friend. Thank you for setting this up, and uh, we're I'm gonna keep talking to these two. And of course, we're gonna, man. We're gonna talk some more shit about you, though. We were talking more be yeah. about you before, <laughs> Marv. I love you, and thank you for making this happen and everything that you do. I to see you know my world's colliding in a good way. I love but that's just what it's like with words. <laughs> I like Sorry. that you went into that, Adam. Appreciate that. Little power man. Sorry, <laughs> Marvin. Marvin. I'm here Marvin. speaking. <laughs> Marvin, thank you so much for setting this up. And he's oh. gone. All he's right, gone. cool. So, last couple things I got to get in. I'm going to let you guys go. I know it's uh, it's late for you, Neil and, and Adam. You probably need to crack a new beer. Um, <laughs> it's Neil, late for me also. <laughs> Neil, uh, you already mentioned working with Bill Stevens of Descendants, one of my all-time favorite bands, one of my all-time favorite musicians, and Bill Stevens. What yes. the fuck was that like? Were you a, like me? Did you grow up just loving the Descendants? And yes, absolutely. It was just like kind of like geeking out for like the first week and just being like, "Holy shit!" Like, I remember taking the first phone call, being like, "Hey." Um, John was like, hey, Bill wants to call someone in the band, kind of talk through like what the plan is for the record and uh, just see like how everything like kind of meshes and whatever. And I remember just taking the phone call and him just like like cracking jokes and like talking shit the whole time. I'm like, dude, I love this guy. Like I'm like just like the whole time. I'm like, he's fucking my people. Uh, and then we get there and I was like just the whole like kind of first we were there for I think for like two months in 
Fort Collins and uh, the whole first month of it was just like him talking shit to us, like being <laughs> like, songs aren't good enough. Shit's not good. And then like there was like just this one day, like it all changed. He's like, this is probably my, my favorite record I've ever worked on. And I'm like, wait, dude, you that's were a- just literally talking shit to us. <laughs> For an entire month what straight. What a fucking about legend. Night. What a legend. I love Dude, he that. he was a fucking legend. I think he's he's playing the fucking mind games. Like, he knows yeah. what's going on. He's a fucking... He was playing the producer role. He yeah, knew exactly, exactly. what the fuck he's he like, was doing. He's like, it's not good enough. <laughs> he finally thinks, like, we have enough. He's like, I love it. It's great. Yeah. Let's get this shit fucking rolling. Yeah. No, that's, that's incredible. Working with a professional like that, I mean... Fuck, man. I grew up with Descendants. The first thing I... I I have to admit, it wasn't even a real album. It was all the discography. When yeah. I, when I when I that's what I first in, was introduced to, and then after that, I was just Descendants is, I mean, top three punk rock bands for me of all time, up there with uh, No Effects and Rancid and Descendants. Yeah. I'd put right next to it. Absolute favorite. Fucking, I think if, if anyone's watching this right now and doesn't know who the fuck the Descendants are, first of all, you kind of suck. But second of all, you can you can go find them. They're still out there. Cool to be you was uh, their cool most recent sick. record, and we were on Warp Tour. It was our last Warp Tour. I was with Jimmy, and uh, we listened to that record every single day before we went out on stage. And uh, yeah, it was it was amazing to hear. Like we hadn't heard them since uh, this place sucks and uh, that record, and it had been several years. And then that record came out. Cool to be you and fucking so so grateful that they did that i really hope they put something else out again sometime because it they it's never a bad did, time for this i guess it's been a while now it was like hyper caffeinated or something like hyper caffeinated like, yeah it's been it's well that came out what was it 2016 so it's been it was the same years? time as bad vibrations because when it, we were doing so bad vibrations yeah. he was he was doing songs for that and like he would like play us stuff and he's like what do you guys think about this what, what should we change what should i do i'm like you're asking me. I'm like me? just sitting there, and I'm just like, <laughs> "Are you are like seriously like you're asking us like? Did you did you make on, any like, changes, Neil? No, I did. I did talk shit to him about a merch design, and he like put me in my place. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Yo, you should you should do this. Like Milo should be like you know like teal green or something on this shirt." And he's like, uh, "We do just fine on merch." And I was like, "Oh yeah." I mean, like, I'm like, "Yeah, no, sure you do. Yeah, no, it's fine." Uh, <laughs> Fuck me, right? I'll uh, go ahead and remember his. I like the fuck me, container. right? It's perfect. He had like a storage container out back behind the studio with just a bunch of Descendants merch in it. No, that like... was their that was their tour that was their tour van. That was like oh. their box truck that they toured in. You can and... like go out there and grab stuff. Yeah, from he's it he let me. It. He's like he's like Neil. No. I know you're like a huge all Descendants fan. Um, you can go out to our our box truck and you can take whatever you want out of there. Like if you can find something in there that you want, there's like a bunch of vans in there. Uh, you can just take it. You can have it. And I'm like, this is the coolest day of my life. How did you and not, like, he did, how did you not just like come out with understood. boxes? Like for me, I'd just be like, uh, um, no, I'm just going to unhitch it from the back and just take the rest of <laughs> take the whole thing. It's <laughs> already <laughs> packed up. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're roadie bug. He was living in in like their van or like it was their box truck or whatever that they mm-hmm. like put bunks in and shit. And so he, it was the guy that toured with him forever. And uh, he would like randomly like wander in the studio and we'd be like drinking, hanging out at night. And he would just be like, tell us like the wildest stories about like just being on the road and like kind of getting older and whatever. And he's just like, you know, and then Bill would come in the morning. He's like, did did someone come in here and bother you guys in the middle of the night last night? And we're like, yeah uh bug you know him he's like nah he's like we i saw on the camera that someone broke in here and he like scared us telling us that like he didn't know the guy and he just like he should have been like bug bug's been dead for 35 years (laughs) there was a ghost in the studio last night uh we're like fuck man you can't be doing that shit to us that's fantastic. I'm I'm glad I have I have never had the pleasure of meeting any of the guys from uh, the Descendants yet. And it's it's definitely on my bucket list. I love those guys. Um, can't wait to do that. Uh, you did mention one last thing on uh, uh, on your record, uh, Bad Vibrations. Yeah. You you mentioned uh, Andy Wallace did the mixing yeah. on it. We've had yeah. Andy Wallace do the mixing since City of Evil for us. Yeah. Um, 
Did you get to go out to New York and uh, work yeah, with yeah. him? In, oh my god! So like sat in and in, in like what Flatiron or whatever the like that studio is with the big SSL and yep the whole the whole thing you, you sit there wait there's a popcorn machine in the corner yeah like you're you're waiting for, and then uh, he calls you and he's like yeah I'm I'm gonna be ready at this time and you sit there for yep. another hour but it's fucking Andy Wallace you know he's gonna kill it so you don't care and then you go <laughs> in there and fucking he kills it um. Did you ever have the pleasure of sharing a drink with Andy? Uh, we did not. The he was actually mixing our record. I think like right as he finished up your you guys's record. Okay. Um, and so we were like, he was like coming to the suit or coming to the city from like I guess his house, like in he's New upstate. Jersey he's got an upstate place. And he's got like all that. his fucking cars and everything. He's a yeah. big car guy. He was like, he's like telling us, he's like, you know, um, I always stay at this one comfort inn. Uh, whatever, and he's like, I take the train in, and we're like, dude, this guy's like the fucking coolest, he's like the grandpa best. dude ever, <laughs> like l- rock legend. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, yeah, every year we do this like cover show. Me and my friends, uh, we're in this band, we play in the city, and and it was like the night that he was going to do that, and I was like, oh shit, we're gonna go watch like Andy Wallace's band, and like something happened, like we went out to dinner with like some like our manager or something, like went long, and we were supposed to go drink with him, whatever, and. Like we ended up not getting to go, and I was like, "Fuck!" I like kicked myself. If you ever have the chance again, you got to go out. His band is amazing. He's a bass player, and he's fucking incredible. Uh, He's got like uh, great jazz, loungy shit, and as you know, his musical mind, all the stuff that he's produced and mixed over the years, fucking legend. Anyone, just type in Andy Wallace if you don't know who the fuck I'm talking about. You're gonna learn everything that he's done, and (laughs) it's it's no, it's nothing short of amazing. Uh, but another amazing fact about him, he loves martinis and I, <laughs> and we have shared a few of them together and that's, that's our thing. I actually, uh, I FaceTimed with him a couple of times over some martinis and he, he he's a true dude. He, 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 he understands is. it, man. He's, 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 he's tied in. It's fucking cool. He's like one of the people that like, you can just like talk to and it doesn't matter. Like all of his accolades aside, he's just like the, like a normal dude. Yeah. And he's there. He has he, like his. He has his art, but his art is so based on also what what you want out of your music, right? Like you can go in there and he's you can discuss what you want out of the mix with him rather than he, him getting upset. Like if you have something like you're like, ah, I kind of want to want to hear this a little bit. And he goes, oh, I heard that. OK, I know what you're talking about. He already knows what you're talking about on his board. And he's like, give me a second. Just fucking right away. Knows exactly what you're talking about. Is it? Yeah. As if he was there for the last year in the studio, you know? Yeah. It's incredible. He is uh, legendary. I just looked he, him up and read what he That's done. the crazy thing, Adam. Awesome. Like you see him and you're just like, you are a legend. Like it doesn't yeah. like it, looks you just know it. Cool. He's a badass, Adam. You gotta you gotta you gotta meet this guy. He's a fucking badass. Straight up badass. Yeah, I'd like to hang out with him. I love his I love that he started with Run DMC and Slayer. Yeah. And then just freaking come two thousands, he was just like Every, every rock ra- band. rock radio band. He yeah. was like, well, even before, and like I mean, the good shit too. Like you know, system, well, he was part of he was part of Nevermind. He he was a producer on some of the songs on Nevermind. Like not oh, wow. just mixer. He was a producer on Never. Fucking Nevermind. Are you kidding me? One of the greatest rock albums ever put out. Like he did Seven Dust. I yeah, love Seven Dust. He's, oh, done, yeah. he's done it all, man. He's fucking incredible. Oh, that's sick. He's so funny too, because like he was just talking to us. It's like so normal. Like he'd be like doing his thing, you know. Like he'd be like, we'd be behind him. Like mix is super quiet, so it's like real quiet in the room. Yeah. Uh, and then, like he just like turn around. He's like, oh man, I forgot. I gotta order this part for my old Rolls Royce. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this because that's exactly. And I'm just how like, I'm is. like, I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, me and my wife, we take this tour where we drive the Rolls Royces around New Jersey. Uh, I'm actually going home this weekend. I'm gonna. Take I love that you have back. to say plural Rolls Royces. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's this just guy, just but he's makes- like the most normal, down to earth guy, and like you wouldn't think of like like he has his things he's into, obviously, but he's just like just he's a very normal- passionate about music, man. He's, yeah, he, yeah. He knows music, and that's he yeah. and he's everything I listened to in high school. Yeah. Yes. Trust like company, literally every taproot. Trapped, Power Man, Puddle of Mud, Phoenix. Like, that's sick. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic, man. I'm <laughs> so glad that we... living legend. It's amazing, again, Neil, that we haven't 
spent more time. I mean, we spent a handful of time together, but we need to spend some more time, especially after you have your kid. I want to come back to you um, because right now you're you're living the life. You don't have the kid yet. I have a three year old. <laughs> um, we'll discuss that at a later date um, All right. when the when the kid actually comes out. <laughs> Adam, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and get to know you. See you again after uh, our our set in Costa Mesa Studios. Yeah, that was our, fucking mid COVID hangout. Yeah, mid COVID. I mean, yeah, we we were safe. We 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 walked yeah. away with it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> again, thank, thank you, you guys so much. Uh, yeah, thank you, man. Everybody, go follow both these two gentlemen. You got Neil over at Neil Westfall forty four on Instagram. Is that the same for Twitter and Facebook? I imagine as well. Um. Yeah. I think sure. So. It's really not that hard to find. They'll just yeah. put in Neil Westfall. You'll probably find it pretty easy. Uh, Adam El Macias. Third time's a charm, still getting it, right? Yeah, I got um, it right every time, man. Yeah, and uh, you could follow. You can actually go to uh, Adam's page. That's at uh, profi- uh, profile. Sorry, easy enough for me to say. Profile dot. What is it? Uh, Adam El oh, just ad- Yeah, just adamelmacias.com will take you there. All right, perfect. Just redirect. Yeah, yeah just, just follow that. And he's got all the pictures of everyone under the sun. By the way, he's got like these really amazing pictures, but... There's one, you know, icon that I don't see on there, Adam. Um, I mean, you've been around me enough. Why don't you have a picture of me up there? <laughs> I don't know, man. Talk to Marvin. <laughs> Come on here. Let me get that photo pass. Yeah. Come hang out whenever. Yeah, next time. Don't Rafa ask Marvin. You, you got direct contact now. I'll get you the oh, photo yeah, pass. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hit you up. And if you guys, I don't, I don't go to strip clubs often, but if you guys go, I'll come and I'll photograph it for you. Uh, I would appreciate you coming without the, without the photo. Yeah, no photos, but, uh, <laughs> no photos, but also Adam. you could follow more of uh, a day to remember at ad at adtr. Um, that's at is for everything uh, social media as well as adtr.com. dot uh, com. Yeah. Everything coming up. Uh, we we briefly spoke about new music. I'm sure if you guys follow, you're going to get all the new news about when the next Day to Remember album is coming out. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for being on it. Oh, and make sure you guys absolutely check out Don't Shit on the Bus. I'm sure this yes. is going to develop into such an awesome uh, a podcast. It's a great idea. You guys are doing we'll something you on fucking it. great. I would love to come on it. Um, and uh, we'll 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 talk some more some more stories when you guys are ready for that. But awesome. you know, teaching everyone the, the ropes of what uh, the the road is, I think that's a that's a really cool trying to show everyone idea. how to throw ropes. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, thanks again so much. Hey, cheers again, brothers. We'll cheers. Uh, we'll talk soon. Let's do this in in person next time. All right. All right. Deal. Cheers. Peace. Well, that'll just about do it. And thanks again for tuning in this episode of Drinks with Johnny. Really appreciate you guys. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel right here below. Turn in your uh, notifications. And uh, thanks again to Neil and Adam for being on the show. Uh, Make sure you guys head over to drinkswithjohnny.com. We got exclusive merch out there. um, Helping to rep what we're doing here. Really appreciate it. I'm having a blast doing this show, guys. I really am. So really appreciate you guys. And uh, if you sign up for the newsletter at drinkswithjohnny.com, that comes from me directly every week. So that's an added bonus. As well as following us on Drinks With Johnny everywhere, social media. That's uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, soon to be TikTok. Whatever the kids are doing there, I'm going to figure out. Um, And then uh, if you head over anywhere you podcast, type in Drinks With Johnny, we're there as well. You can listen to this as well. So, um, again, appreciate you guys. And uh, until next week, cheers.